All right, guys, every, every great sales team has a lot of principles they focus on. For us, it's gonna be three things. A, always, B, B, C, closing. That's gonna be the motto that we live by. Do I have your attention now? Are you interested in what I'm saying? Are you ready to make that decision? Let's take some action. Live from 1SEO, it's taking control. Alrighty, Bill was fired up off of that closing. Absolutely, this week. absolutely. But uh, thank you guys for joining this week's episode of Taking Control. We have a monster episode, episode 50. 50, the of big 5 0. Control. It's been Just a little like while. Me. <laughs> I'm a few years off of the big 5-0 myself, but big episode, episode 50. Uh, Bill, you've been on before, uh, I believe I episode 33, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, Bill Roussel is, of course, our VP of Client Relations, and he's going to be a perfect guest for this week's episode, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit here. I'm Anthony Kane, an SEO strategist here at 1SEO. Um, you're watching Taking Control, which is our weekly series here presented by 1SEO, where we cover all things from IT to digital marketing. Uh, every Thursday at 1.15 we go live, so feel free to join us every Thursday. So, Bill, big episode this week. We're gonna be covering a lot of lead generation, um, you know, sort of the, the different elements, different components to, to lead generation, you know, qualifying leads, you know, the whole trip campaign, uh, your, your CRM, everything, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get into it. Um, but before we do, we have a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, as I say pretty much every week, we are still hiring for both the digital and IT sides of the business. So. Um, you know, we're looking, always looking for PPC specialists, SEO strategists, email marketing, content, social media, sales, uh, sales, of course, IT desk, uh, desktop support. So really we, we've got a lot of great, uh, open opportunities. So I encourage everyone to go to one seocom slash careers to, to check that out. Uh, as Bill has been there a few times already, we have the new office in Salt Lake city as well. So, um, Bill, you, you've been there two, three. Yeah. I've been out two, three times okay. so far. Yeah. We've had, uh, a Great uh, acclimation to the market, definitely, um, and the the results and the reception that people have had for One SEO and what we bring to the table uh, has been phenomenal. We're pretty excited about where the future lies for the Salt Lake market. Yeah, yeah. So the, the growth is is definitely real, um, and we're always looking for for great people to to come join the team. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great culture. Everyone's like a family here. So certainly check out slash careers for for more information on some open positions. Um, but before Bill and I kind of get into the crux of this episode for, for lead gen, we're actually going to pass it on over to Al Sika, who is one of our business development specialists here at 1SEO, uh, who's going to be heading this week's whiteboard session. So Al, take it away. Here we're going to be talking about, is your website set up for lead generation? Uh, a few things we want to talk about today. Contact us, phone numbers, uh, live chat, sticky nav, all important things when it comes to setting up your pro uh, website for the proper lead generation site. Um, we want to make sure that it follows the Z pattern. So when we have the Z pattern in, in spec, we have our brand right here, followed by your phone number, coming across to make that Z, all the way down here to your content and main navigation, followed by as if you were reading it just like left to right, top to bottom. Everything should be set up because we are creatures of habit. We want to see things that we see them everywhere else. As if you went to every other site, you're going to want to see that phone number in the top right hand corner. This phone number is important because this is where it's going to set you apart, making this stand out in a different color compared to the rest of your text on your website. Um, this should be a red, another color that's contrasting to the rest of your content on your site. This will draw people's attention and choose people to click on it instead of just going through and getting lost in all the text that's on your site. Followed by that, we're going to want to have our contact us in place. This will be over here, usually in the right hand corner. Here you're going to be, uh, people will be entering their name, their email, and their phone number. This is the quickest way to gain leads in order to have somebody contact them immediately. I know that it works very well for 1SEO. As soon as somebody fills out a contact us, we immediately give them a call and they love that experience that they're constantly on top of their game. Um, next, we have our live chat. Similar to the contact us, um, but it gives the end user an experience that they feel like they're already talking to somebody instead of just filling out a form, going to the next site and talking to somebody else. This eliminates that middleman so that you don't have to worry about them reaching out to your competitors. You immediately already have a response and they feel like they're already engaged with your company. This will give you a ability to go through and look at, okay, we're trying to get their information, whether that be phone number, email address, same thing that we have in the contact us, um, which will be able to gain all that information. Um, next, we have our sticky navigation. As you go through a site, it's very hard to get lost in, or very easily to get lost in all the information that you have throughout the content. 
We want to make sure that the home service, home services, about us, blog, and contact us are always visible so that everybody can navigate through your site with ease. If it's hard to navigate through your site, people get lost and they wind up bouncing out of your site and going to your competitors. Um, so as everybody moves down through the site, this navigation will follow them as they scroll down your page. And then lastly, we have our content above the fold. Above the fold meaning that when you look at a website, you're looking at it and this would be the end and then to get to the next portion, you have to scroll down. You wanna make sure that there's already content above the fold and not just a big giant picture um, because that deters people from looking throughout your site. We wanna make sure the most relevant content is at the very top of the page. Um, otherwise, once you have all these things in place and you have your Z pattern set up properly with your contact us, live chat, phone number bright and out to the right hand corner where it's usually located, you will have very happy CEO because the dollar bills will be rolling in. Lead generation. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Penn and I'm gonna talk a little bit about a new bug Microsoft and Google have released for today's technologically speaking segment. This bug is known as the speculative store bypass or the variant four. And it's similar to the meltdown inspector bugs that have been really big in the press lately. What it does is it exploits what's called speculative code execution that a lot of modern CPUs have been leveraging. And so one of the issues is, although a lot of these bugs have been patched lately um, in modern browsers, Firefox, Chrome, what have you, one of the issues is that when these things do get patched in the browser, they have to also be addressed in the CPU. And this can actually cause some serious performance issues. Actually, the Variant 4 bug that has just been released can cause up to 2-8% to performance hit for your CPU um, and this is a really big deal because of the fact that you know although these things can be patched throughout the software some of the new um, chips that are coming out that have to rely on this are going to be much much harder it's going to take a lot longer to phase out some of these speculative code execution bugs um, and one of the cool things actually for anybody out there who's you know interested Microsoft's art offering up to a quarter million dollar bug bounty for some of these code um, exploits. So for all you guys out there who want to try to find some, go for it. Hey guys, it's Rach. And Beach. And this week we're bringing you the digital buzz. What's up first? Netflix versus Apple. So Apple wants to get in Netflix's territory, right? Uh, that's already a polluted territory with Hulu, uh, with Amazon Prime Video. Even things like On Demand. Yeah. So. The idea here is that Apple really wants to flex their brand, and what better way to do that than to, you know, to preload all your devices you're going to be selling, because you know Apple's always going to sell, uh, with this new service. So I do think they're a hefty contender to want to get into that space. Uh, at the same time, I think they have their hands in a lot. But if any company's going to pull it off that's not Google or Amazon already, right, it's going to be Apple. Apple. Um, me personally, I'm not surprised, but interested to, interested to see this timing. So as a Spotify premium user, they um, Spotify recently paired up with Hulu to give you a discounted rate to subscribe to Hulu. So this is now Apple attacking that idea, going a step forward, saying, hey, maybe if you have Apple Music, we'll give you a percentage off of our um, you know, Apple video streaming service. It's actually so new that they haven't even named it. So I'll be interested to see where it goes. What about you, BJ? I think we're gonna blink, give it a year, two years, it's gonna be in full swing. Apple will pull it off, whether we like it or not. All right, guys, next up on the list, Microsoft is acquiring GitHub. Take it away, BJ. So Microsoft is looking to buy GitHub at $7.5 billion. That's a hefty $7.5 billion. You could do a lot with that one. Yes, uh, back in 2015, GitHub was, uh, you know, valued at $2 billion, and they've since grown, obviously. Clearly. Um, but what GitHub is, is a resource center so that you can uh, streamline coding, developers can use it to stay on the same playing field. Uh, it's good for internal teams because now everybody's operating on the same uh, coding structure and things and whatnot, so you can share materials back and forth. That being said, with Microsoft fueling it now, um, you know, it's not kind of indie run for lack of a better phrase, but you'll have uh, this leading brand Microsoft. Uh, but what really is interesting here is that Google actually was in talks before to acquire it, and things might have been different. So it'd be interesting to see what Microsoft brings to the table here. Our third and final topic today is a recent Pew study Pew -pew. is actually showing that teens are dumping Facebook. How dare they? I know. I, I love Facebook. So there's not really a major issue here right here right now, but what you're going to see over time is them trending. The study actually showed that they're going to Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. They're looking at all their Fortnite videos. They're snapping and doing weird filters with their face. And Instagram is just all visual. So why not? It makes sense. We live in a very hyperactive and uh, everything's constantly moving world. 
Facebook might be losing its luster and you know Facebook's taking steps back and forth right now having to try to make you know reparations for what they want to do. Absolutely. Um, the biggest thing that I took out of this survey was that in 2015 Pew did this survey and YouTube wasn't included. Now it's very interesting to see in 2018 how far YouTube has come. Um, me personally, I watch YouTube for music videos, I love music videos, I'm like obsessed with all my country singer music videos, um, but now there is content, spoken content, visual content, all types of content on YouTube and that platform is growing in itself. I feel like they don't get as much of a like a showcase or a shine on them, but they're up and coming and we can't forget about them either. Absolutely. So definitely something to keep in mind, especially as we start make, making business decisions that involve social as you move forward. Are we going to feel it right here, right now? Well, we kind of do to a degree, but with all that being said, it'd be interesting to see if this helps carry Snapchat through because mm -hmm. we historically thought Snap's not going to make it. Um, BJ thinks Snap is dying. It's, it's a toy right now with a little bit of advertising. So we'll see, we'll definitely see. Um, but something to keep in mind, especially in the coming years and as we approach 2020, not too many years off, right? I can't believe that's so close. <laughs> ah. Guys, with that, this is the uh, digital buzz for this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. See ya. Have a good one. Alrighty, welcome back. And thank you so much, BJ and Rachel, for this week's Digital Buzz. Always great stuff. And also a special shout out to Al Sika for an awesome whiteboard session this week as well. So, Bill, we are here to sort of round out this week's episode, which we know was all about lead gen, right? That's the, that's the core focus. So I think, obviously, you have a, a ton of experience with, with sales and, and lead generation in general. So if you could just take us through a little bit about the process of one SEO's lead generation um, and sort of how uh, we manage that, that, that process internally. Yeah, I think... Uh, I I think that, um, you know, kind of like how Al was talking about in the whiteboard session today, there's a lot of different ways that people can come to you through your site. Sure. There's, you know, contacts, phone calls, uh, form fills, live chats. Right. Uh, the key to any good lead generation strategy is that you have to react while the lead is hot. Yeah. Because the turnaround time that that person's need is at that time. And if you're not taking advantage of being able to get back in touch with them, it's a situation where you make it much more difficult as time goes on. The more touches that somebody has with a, with a lead, the more likely that lead is going to close to the sale of what they need. So you have to be able to say, hey, how do I incorporate what's coming in? and turning it around and finding out what that person's need is and then being able to be the solver of that. And there's a lot of different systems that we use here at One SEO to help us along that process and from a part out of a marketing automation sure. as, as well as utilizing a CRM like Salesforce that can keep us up to speed throughout the process so that we're following up on meeting that client's expectation. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I definitely want to touch on the marketing automation. You mentioned part of which is, is something that we use here, uh, certainly. And I also, uh, but before we get into that, so you mentioned reaching out while, while the lead is hot. I think that's particularly important. Well, it's really important for every vertical, obviously, right. but, you know, especially if, you, if you're a service-based industry or, or even something like us. So you're right. You're hitting them when they need it, right? So if they're doing a search, they're obviously ready to contact. They're ready to speak with somebody. Um, and you have to imagine that they're reaching out to a few other people as well, a few other companies as well. And it's kind of the who's going who's gonna to get them first. Or... Yeah, yeah, I mean, in, in most situations, people generally will make that first call to say, hey, what's the price range sure. that, I'm, that I'm looking at? You know, my friend or my neighbor said it's going to cost me $5,000 to get a tree removed out of my yard. So when I make that first call, a lot of times I'm just seeking, am I in the right ballpark? Right, right. Um, those second and third calls that happen is a situation where you have to say, that person's following up to see if they're in the right ballpark. And then it's all about customer service. So if you're that first person, not only do you have to be in the right price, but you also have to be in the right realm as treating that client and trying to solve their need. And that's where most people are, are challenged is saying, hey, how do I meet and listen to what that lead is asking me? Because if you're not listening, then you're not selling. Right. You'll get next to pretty quickly. I yeah, assume. absolutely. So, yeah, no, I think that that is really important, and it's it's not just like a cookie cutter approach or following a script. It, it's actually, especially for our industry, I, I know it's you know getting your hands in there, looking at the situation, what's going on, finding out what's working, what maybe isn't working. You know, it, it's not so much, you know, this is what we can offer. It's hey, here's what I think's going on, and here's how I would do it. You know. Yeah. I, I, at one SEO, we get a lot of people that inquire and say, hey, can you tell me what your three packages are? 
Right. You let me have package A, package B, and package C. It's a big well, no-no. It, there's no package for any website. No two websites are ever the same. Right. And what they face, whether it be in an on-page or an off-page strategy and specifically how the search engine's reacting to it. And so everybody's a little bit different. So you have to be able to have those conversations with people that are going to understand where their pain points are to help them get through those pain points. Right. So you mentioned CRM. Uh, obviously, we, we use Salesforce here as a, mm -hmm. as a big propeller for, for our lead gen. So how pivotal is having a CRM, having everybody's kind of hands in there, making sure that everyone's on the same page? Does that come to, to the process in general of, from when someone reaches out to when they, they sign on? You know, how, how important is that, that linchpin? It's, it's, it's absolutely critical because um, what it, it does is allow people to manage the, the client through the process, no matter who's touching it. Right, right. Um, because working in that cloud of understanding, okay, this person was reached out to on this day. Here's where they are. How can I facilitate making sure that they have the things that they need through that steps of discovery, needs analysis as far as what they're looking to accomplish, and then putting a resolution in place. You can see that whole process unfold within the CRM from start to finish, and it's yeah. uh, it. It allows you to be look at the metrics as well from an organizational standpoint and say, hey, how can I reduce the time that I'm having? And it's just not a one SEO. This can be sure. to the local plumber utilizing a you know a, a service titan or um, any one of the the, right. the CRMs that are out there for the service based industries that allow them to get through their process as far as with how their customers are happy or not happy, right. and then be able to say, how do I market back out to them? Now that I've got them, how do I keep them knowing all my products and services? Yeah, no, definitely. For those just tuning in as well, uh, this is episode 50 of Taking Control. I'm joined by Bill Russell, who's our VP of Client Relations, and we're talking all things lead gen. So perfect segue, actually, you mentioned how do I market back to these people? Because you know, it, oftentimes, especially in you know, if you're buying a car, or even if you're choosing you know an HVAC company or something like that, it's typically not the first person that you you see you, you sign, or the first person that you talk to is the one you go with. You know, usually you're shopping around. You know, so it, it is important to make sure that you're marketing back out to these people. Um, I think that there are a lot of great tools that provide sort of that automation, but it's not so much again with that cookie cutter because. You want to market back to something that they were actually showing interest in, right? So for us, if someone's showing interest in pay-per-click services and they right. need somebody to help manage their AdWords or whatever it might be, we want to make sure that we're not going to just throw out a random, hey, we do social media marketing you know, to them as well. We, we want to make sure that we're, hey, this is how we're going to help you increase your ROI on your pay-per-click budget. You know, more information, more tips and tricks on pay-per-click. You know, that, it's that marketing, driving them down the funnel, finding out what their biggest need is and then marketing that way as well. So. I think that was a great point when you mentioned it's, you know, marketing back out to that person is a big piece of it, too. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times that you work so hard to find the new lead and the cost for that particular new lead is very high. The cost per remarketing to your existing customer is much lower. Right. And a lot of times they don't know of all the services that you provide because they only came to you for that initial need. Right. So you have to really say, hey, how do I keep my customers aware of what my tricks and tips are of as far as how I can help them. And in addition to that, you don't have to have a, a great um, CRM system with a marketing automation platform. You can do something as simple as sending an email yeah. out once a month or twice a month. You know, you don't over, obviously over want to saturate your clients with emails, sure. but you want to make sure that you're putting out to them things that are hot on your list to be able to help close your revenue gaps. Yeah. I mean, e-commerce is, is obviously a really easy one because if someone's bought something in the, in the past, you know, hey, this goes well with that, or you might need to change this or whatever it might be. You can. It's an easy way to remarket and, and to shoot out newsletters, but it can also work with service base as well. You know, even if you're a plumber, you just mentioned shoot out an email. Hey, you know, temperatures are going to be dropping. You know, this is what you can do to make sure your pipes don't freeze. And if it's too late, here's our number for emergency. Yeah, hey, so, you what's know. your preventative plan that you have going in to the summer season with air conditioning exactly. and what sets you apart? Your existing customers don't always know everything that you do. And the more information you can tell about them, the longer they'll be your customer, not search for that service 
online for somebody else. And then, yeah, no, perfect. It's a great example. And, and lastly, to kind of round things out, you mentioned customer service. Uh, obviously, it starts with the first touch point. It starts with the sale or, or excuse me, the first introduction call or whatever it might be. Um, and then it, you say it all the time, but it flows through right from the sales process to delivering on the product at that point. What, what, you know, whether it's us as a digital marketing agency or whether it's a plumber or a roofer or a painter or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, how important is it from when you know they first speak to somebody on the phone to really never ends? But it, it's uh, it's so critical that that first that moment of truth that you have with right. somebody is their first impression will be their last impression. And if you're in a situation that you're not taking advantage of saying, hey, when I touch somebody for the first time, it sets the standard of what they're going to hear from yeah. every other point along the funnel. So one of the things that one SEO we really try to both on the tech and on the digital side is to say customer service has to be paramount. And we focus on really three things. We focus on communication, transparency, and results. And sure. if we have those three things, we can make any sale happen as far as living up to that expectation that we sold them on the front side. Right. Yeah, no, it's, you mentioned the first impression is your last impression because it is really, really, really difficult to sort of change someone's mindset once they've already gotten that. So that's a, a great point as well. But uh, Bill, I'm sure you could talk for, for hours Absolutely. On, on lead gen, um, specifically one SEO, but um, thank you so much for joining episode. I appreciate it. Episode 50 of Big 5-0. Big 5-0. Um, Big 5-0. Two weeks away from our one year anniversary, so definitely look out for that as well. But Bill, thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. It's, it's been great. And everybody, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you guys next Thursday on episode 51. Have a great weekend. All right, guys, that's a wrap. All right, another great episode. At 50. That's All right. Cool. All right, back to the drawing board. That's it. All right.